Okay, hey guys. So we are on symbiotic relationships. Okay, symbiotic is symbiosis. And that means living together. Okay, so symbiosis, we are living together. Now, as you came into the classroom, normally where you pick up your do now, you should have picked up a blue piece of paper, okay? So with the blue piece of paper, I want us to go ahead and fold it hamburger style, okay, hamburger style with a little edge here, okay, a little leftover. On that little leftover, we are going to write symbiotic relationships running out of room there okay so we have symbiotic relationships on the edge we're gonna go ahead and make four cuts to have five flaps okay four cuts to make five flaps. So one, two, three, four. No, mine are not even, they are not pretty, but that's okay. Okay, this is gonna go on to page 68 in our notebook. So we have four flaps. Okay, or four cuts from five flaps. So the first one we are going to have is called mutualism. Then we will have something called commensalism. Parasitism. Predation. And competition. Now, these last three, we probably know already. Parasitism, parasite host, predation, predator prey, and competition. You're competing for other resources. So we're just kind of gonna, we're going to kind of break down the relationships in an ecosystem between organisms, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and give an example of each one and write what it generally means. So first, we're gonna do mutualism. Mutual means both, okay? So this is where both organisms benefit. Both organisms are going to benefit from the relationship. Both organisms are benefiting from the relationship, so both organisms are going to get something out of it. So an example, we gotta think to uh, Finding Nemo, right? Okay. That's our example. So we have the sea anemone and the clownfish. Okay, the sea anemone is providing protection, okay, for the clownfish. And the clownfish is keeping out other organisms.
okay? So if they are both benefiting, Sorry, they're making announcements, guys. Okay, hopefully we're done. Okay, so if both of them are benefiting, that means we have positive, happy relationships for both. Okay? So both organisms are positive, both organisms are happy. So that is mutualism. Another example of mutualism could be a flower and a bee. So a bee drinks nectar and gets energy from the flower, okay? And then the bee helps out the flower by pollinating the flower. So that's another example of mutualism. So now we're moving on to commensalism, okay? So for commensalism, this one um, is kind of tough just because it's a word we haven't heard before, okay? So commensalism is when one organism benefits in the relationship and the other organism is not affected. Okay, so one organism benefits, the other organism is not affected. So maybe y'all have seen those fish that kind of like hover over sharks sometimes okay and the shark just lets them be those are called remora fish okay so basically what the remora fish do is keep um bacteria and other small fish away from the shark that's annoying the shark okay um but the shark isn't really affected by it at all okay um another example <clears throat> would be a water buffalo and some birds that hang out on top of the water buffalo or the hippo, right? And they keep the insects off. But, I mean, the hippo or the water buffalo is not really affected, but the bird's getting food out of it, okay? So our example is going to be a hippo and birds, okay? So the hippo is not affected. Birds eat the insects so they get food. Yeah, it helps the annoyingness of the birds, I mean of the insects for the hippo, but I mean it's really not gaining anything out of it. Okay, so the faces we're going to do for that one is going to be one happy face, it benefits. And then the other one is just kind of neutral, okay? It's not happy or sad, it's just kind of neutral. So that is commensalism, okay? Now we have parasitism. Parasitism, obviously we know that there is a parasite and a host So parasite and host, we can um, easily think of like a mosquito, okay? A mosquito is a parasite for us as humans. We are the host. They drink um, our blood, okay? So for this interaction, one organism benefits And the other is harmed. Okay, so one organism benefits, the other is harmed. So an example of that is going to be mosquito. And human. Okay, so that is the parasite. 
human is the host. Another example could be like a dog and a flea. Okay, so a flea or a tick, that's a parasite. And then the dog or animal would be the host. So obviously one organism is going to benefit and the other organism is going to be harmed. It's a negative interaction. Okay, so that is a positive and a negative relationship for parasite host. So the last one is going to be similar, okay? Predation, one organism benefits, and the other is harmed. So what I want you to do is think of parasite hosts. They will harm the host, but they don't necessarily kill it. But with predator prey, the predator is going to go ahead and kill the prey. So it is a very positive and then very negative relationship. Okay, so an example, let's do our lion and then we can do a gazelle. So we have predator and then the prey. Okay, so that's going to be a positive relationship for one and then an extremely negative resulting in death relationship for the other. Okay, so that's predation. Last one, we have competition. So for competition, organisms are competing, whoop, my bad, competing for similar resources. Okay, so if organisms are um, competing for similar resources, obviously one organism is going to benefit and then multiple are going to unfortunately get harmed in the process because they will run out of food, water, shelter, whatever it is they are competing for. Okay, so let's say that there is a herd of buffalo. Okay, and then let's also say that there is a herd of of deer, okay? So they are going to be competing for grass. One group will benefit and get that resource that they need, okay? But then that could mean that multiple are going to be harmed because they don't have any food. Okay, so you are going to go ahead and take this foldable and glue it onto page 68, okay? You're gluing it onto page 68. Now that you're done watching this video and making this foldable, you're going to go ahead and continue with the rest of the lesson on the hub. So all of the steps are there in the hub. You follow them in order. Once you're done doing all of the work on there, make sure you work on your homework. Okay, be good guys. Bye.